Sentite Narducci, in esclusiva. Qua si contraddice. Impegnare, ovvero non impegnare, celle... Italia internazionali, ha vinto con, con la sua squadra, la Juventus, nel corso ovviamente della sua carriera, nella squadra. Uh, non ci lasciano assolutamente indifferenti, però riteniamo che ci sono sedi opportune per discuterne, per risolverle. I tifosi hanno dimostrato quella, quella triade che... e noi siamo stati indicati a tutti quanti come colpevoli e hanno fatto bene... Il... I carabinieri. Signor giudice, ho sempre detto che l'avevo annotato sto numero, sempre, in tutte le occasioni. Ma ho letto le sue dichiarazioni, Presidente. On July 14, 2006, the Italian Federation ruled that the five clubs involved in the 2006 Italian match-fixing scandal would be punished for their roles in Cassiopoli, with Juventus being most harshly punished. The evidence presented in the courts showed that Antonio Gerardo and especially Luciano Moggi, two Juventus club officials, amongst others, had created a system along with referee designators to influence the outcome of matches. The original verdict had ruled that Juventus, Lazio and Fiorentina would be relegated to Serie B and all five clubs involved would also receive points deductions for the next season, with Juventus getting the most with 30 and Lazio getting the least with 7. The ruling also determined that all clubs in the scandal would be banned from participating in any European competition in the following season. After a series of appeals from all indicted parties, the punishments placed upon each club except Juventus were greatly reduced and four of the five clubs would play in the 06-07 season in Serie A with reduced points deductions. For Juventus, however, the next season would see them relegated to Italy's second division for the first time in their history as they would begin the season on negative nine points. The final verdict of the trials was questionable at the very least as the evidence provided was insufficient to warrant Juventus having the league title revoked as described by a prosecutor of the federal court. To make matters worse, the title they were stripped of was awarded to their fierce rivals Inter Milan who had finished as runners-up. This was particularly shady because the special commissioner of the court had appointed a group of his friends to reside over the case and among them was a director on the board of Inter Milan. All the obvious red flags and irregularities aside, Juventus' fate was officially sealed and they would have to deal with the inevitable fallout and consequences. Fearing losing a season or more out of top flight football or even worse Champions League football, many of the club stars left during the summer. Most prominently among them were players such as Fabio Cannavaro who signed for Real Madrid, Lilian Turam who left for Barcelona and Zlatan Ibrahimovic who joined rivals Inter. Other departures like Emerson, Mutu and Zambrota saw Juventus lose over half of their first 11. This in addition to their 9 point deficit going into their first season in the second division in nearly 110 years of history meant Juventus had their work cut out for them. Behind the scenes, the club's entire board of directors resigned, while Giraldo and Moggi received five-year and lifelong bans from football respectively. To compound matters, in the midst of all allegations and court proceedings, manager Fabio Capello resigned and left for Real Madrid. Despite the club seemingly being in chaos and disarray, there were still some positives going into the next season. For one, although they lost many key players in the summer, they retained several more who were determined to bring Juventus back to Serie A. Players like Alessandro Del Piero, Pavo Nedved and Gianluigi Buffon, despite the lure of greater things, remained loyal to their club during its greatest hour of need. The club also managed to obtain the services of former player Didier Deschamps. Deschamps had previously been in charge of Monaco where he had led them to a domestic cup and a Champions League final, so his acquisition was quite the coup for a club in the second division. Finally, the prospect of spending a season or more in the doldrums would allow them to cut off all the fat, rebuild and lay foundations for a greater future. Thus, Juventus started the season with some optimism in spite of the dark cloud that was hanging over them. They began the season with a 1-1 draw away to Remini, an indicator that life in Serie B wouldn't be so straightforward. Things quickly picked up however as Juventus went on an 8 game winning run which saw them score 16 goals and record 7 clean sheets in a row. The run finally came to an end against their rivals for the title Napoli as both teams settled for a point at the Stadio San Paolo. The next 7 weeks were a bit slower as Juventus got 4 wins and 4 draws in 8 fixtures which was enough to take them to the top of the table. Up until the new year, the old lady hadn't succumbed to defeat despite the fact that almost every opponent they came up against treated their match against Juventus like a cup final and was determined to be the first to record a famous victory. That changed when Juventus returned from the winter break and were greeted with their first loss of the season versus Loli Mantova. 
Although not catastrophic in the grand scheme of things, the defeat was a devastating reminder of just how tragic the last year had been for Juventus. They didn't linger on the result for too long though, as they racked up 17 out of 21 points in their following 7 games before suffering their second defeat of the season, away to Brescia. The next two and a half months were very fruitful for the Bianconeri. During this period, they went unbeaten and collected 36 out of 42 points with a key victory coming against Napoli during the run. By the time they lost their final two games of the season, Juventus had not only achieved promotion, but they had won the league title by six points. The celebrations were muted, however, as the reality was that Juventus had gone from Serie A champions to disgraced Serie B champions within the space of a year. The club had a lot of work to do upon its return too, as many of the club's stars were getting on in age and club finances were in dire straits. The tarnished reputation of the club also meant they would have trouble attracting the players required to bring along the rebuilding process. The departure of Deschamps following months of conflict with director of football Seco definitely didn't make things any easier either. Fortunately, Juventus was still Juventus so they were able to promptly replace Deschamps with Claudio Ranieri upon their return. Ranieri had managed several big clubs throughout his career such as Fiorentina, Valencia and Chelsea but he hadn't been particularly successful at any of his clubs picking up just three major trophies. But by virtue of circumstance Juventus and Ranieri's paths had crossed and he agreed to take over the club on a three year deal that took effect on the 1st of July. In the off season after sorting out the managerial situation Juventus turned their attention to bringing in new players and reducing the wage bill. They signed several players but most notably Thiago Mendes from Olympic Lyon, Vincenzo Iacinta from Udinese and Jorge Andrade from Deportiva La Coruña. They also let go of many bit part players who had no future at the club like Manuel Blasi and Federico Bozzaretti. Ranieri got off to a decent start with the club as Juventus racked up 17 points in the first 8 games of the season before losing to fellow promoter club Napoli by 3 goals to 1. Juventus then went on a 14 game unbeaten run that thrusted them straight into the title race with AS Roma and Inter. A run of patchy results in the final 3 months of the season saw Juventus fall back in the race for the Scudetto but remain in firm position for Champions League football. Two draws in the last two games of the season were enough to secure third place in Juventus' first season back in top flight football. Having ensured European football for the next season, there was great optimism about the prospects of the club and many felt the old lady was capable of winning Serie A if they played their cards right. The summer of 2008 was rather quiet outside of the signing of Amaury from Palermo for nearly 23 million euros. The season got off to a good start as Juventus advanced to the group stage of the Champions League after a 5-1 aggregate win over FC Petrosalska. Meanwhile, in the league, Juventus started off slowly, just picking up 2 wins out of 7 before going on a 5 game winning run. An away defeat to Inter Milan was only a bump in the road as Juventus grabbed 19 out of 21 points in their next 7 games. In Europe, home and away victories over Real Madrid in Group H allowed Juventus to finish top of the group and advance to the knockouts where they would meet Chelsea. The new year also saw the beginning of Coppa Italia for Juventus who comfortably beat Catania by 3 goals to nil. Two quick defeats in the league towards the end of January put a dent in Juve's titles but 6 wins and a draw between February and March was enough to put them back in contention. During this run, Juventus were eliminated by Chelsea after failing to overturn a one goal deficit in Turin. As with the previous season, poor form in the last portion of the season saw their trophy hopes evaporate as a 7 game winless run in the league and a 4 2 aggregate loss against Lazio meant Juventus would go trophyless once again. There was a consolation to be had however, as Juventus improved on their third place finish from the previous season and ended the year as runners up. Two consecutive top 3 finishes were very inspiring for a club that had been demoted just 3 years prior. The expectation was that Juve would push on and reclaim what was rightfully theirs from Mourinho's Inter Milan. The near future would turn out very differently for Juventus though, as it became apparent that the club had some business to attend to before even hoping to aim for Europe's elite table. Come back for part 2 to see how Juventus rose from the ashes to become the powerhouse that it is today.